Way before the Venice Biennale, one of the first signs of internationalism display in Europe appeared in the Rialto. If we consider the history of Venice, trading equipment was actually the first type of infrastructure being laid. This is due to the economical position of the city, relying on international trades with the European markets, the Arabs, Byzantium, and Roman Empire. The earliest settlement in the Rialto district was on the western side of the modern Rialto Bridge. Rialto became an important district in 1097 when a market moved there. Following that, a boat bridge was set up across the Grand Canal, providing access to it. The market grew with retail, wholesale markets, warehouse, banks, insurance agencies, tax offices, and palace. The role of the Rialto at the time expanded into a multiple dimension of Venetian social structure. In 1561, the Italian scholar Francesco Sanzovino published the Guidebook to Venice, one of the earliest publications to promote Venice for tourists in Europe. In his guidebook, he described that Rialto was not only a hub of international commerce, but also a center of intellectual exchange. Francesco described that at the time, painters, musicians, philosophers, and craftsmen were giving lessons to the youngs around the marketplace. Many bookshops were located on the old bridge, and this witnessed the supremacy Venice had in book printing. Furthermore, patricians gathered there for no reasons other than to strengthen their mutual knowledge by conversing with each other. What started as one of the earliest settlements in Venice slowly evolves into a complex organization of social intelligence. When Shakespeare opened the first scene of the Merchants of Venice with the line, What news on the Rialto? There's no question that the world was well aware of the weight of this question. Zooming in into the area, the Rialto is not simply a market. It does not operate in a single space, but instead activates the entire area as a whole organic form using two elements. First, architectural elements. In Rialto, colonnades expand from the bridge to the market. They provided flexible, free-to-occupy space for traders, merchants, restaurant owners. The structure also intricately linked up all the campos in Rialto area. They are elastic, unifying, and adaptable. The result is a typology that enables Rialto to transform into an organic organization of social intelligence. This results in a complex zone of micro-interactions between the void, with different density and concentrations a socially porous condition that everyone can be a part of. Secondly, the canal profile. Starting from the left is the large docking area for the main market. The docking area extends to the Rialto Mercento station. Then, large stepping access is provided in Campo Iberia. This design connects the Rialto evenly and tightly to the canal. Venice Biennale nowadays, through using art as the common commodity, could be argued to perform the same function. However, there are two major problems. Firstly, the format. The Venice Biennale created a debased form of exhibition, magnified inequality, and imposed Europe as the cultural center. This conceptual map shows Norway, Italy, France, Portugal, Japan are enlarged, while the USA, Asia, Middle East, Africa are shrinked much smaller. This is a paradoxical proposition to the avant-garde nature of the Venice Biennale that the organization claims to have selecting who can be a part of them and who is not. Secondly, the physicality. The perception of the Venice Biennale is imperialistic. Art is constituted under the idea of nations, each segregated in the national pavilion. Then, a wall enclosing the entire Giardinis to the public. The poster of Venice Biennale in 1932 first illustrated the idea. Zooming in into the Giardini, the front facade of the pavilion has been written like a script for the political regime, a physical embodiment of cultural dominations. The project questioned this exclusive form of exhibition and views the Rialto market's spatial and social conditions as a solution. Using the two crucial elements in the Rialto, the colonnade and the canal, working together, challenge both the format and the physicality of the famous Biennale. This porous model will radicalize how we participate and perceive art in Venice. Can the central pavilion become the Rialto market of the 21st century? This is a site map of the Giardini. The central pavilion sits on the edge of Giardini where its wall is literally the boundaries. 
Everything is inaccessible besides the main entrance. The central pavilion has a treatment of front and back stage. The front stage is scripted, with no trace of history available once the previous version is stripped down. The backstage is adaptive and self-organized, showcasing funicular texture and civic quality. The origin of the central pavilion dates back to 1807, built by Napoleon. In 1845, the first facade was imposed. In 1895, first Biennale happened. The building expanded its footprint with a dome and a riverside volume. Passing through six decades of internal modifications, finally the shape of the building set still around 1998. This drawing illustrates a lifetime of evolution of the central pavilion with a compressed timeline. The understanding of the building evolutions helped me to accurately identify the place for interventions. With an understanding of the site, now we move on to reshape the central pavilion to a modern day's Rialto. First step is the profile of the new canal. First, hollow out the space underneath the auditorium. The arrival point is the red area, where the roof orientation of the hall is against the actual logic of the central pavilion. The canal will start from the library side, tuck underneath the auditorium, and then extend into the inside of the pavilion. Then, it will become a three-dimensional multiple-level space with steps and an elevated pathway. These measures generate density, which is a vital role of porosity. They will allow different types of occupations with multiple levels of intensity and intimacy. The second step is the colonnade. The development of the colonnade is the main focus of my technical thesis. It is an exploration of form, history, and environmental parameters. In the first part, I look into different form generation methods and alter the parameters to achieve different results, from bone voronoi volume to 3D chemical diffusion process. This set of prototype speculations makes me wonder how the synthesis between the traditional and the contemporary looks like, which leads me to the second part. In the second part, I looked into Vicenza Palazzo de Ravagone, where Palladio strategically used Seriana as his architectural tool to enhance civicness reshaping the Vicenza government building. Therefore, I try to use the notion of Siriana, experimenting with what type of rhythm creates harmony and integrity. This leads me to a pedigree of prototype being developed. The study serve as a strong support of my proposal. Finally, I have chosen this model for further development. In the third part, I look into the environmental aspect of my colonnades and how by the introduction of individual adjustable elements, the structure can become environmentally active, influencing the thermal comfort. Then I examined the geometrical implication of the new canal profile and how it will affect the velocity and the cleanliness of the canal. Finally, concluded with setup that will maximize comfort and hygiene level. Now zooming back to the site. The ash element shown here was actually dated back to 1895, which is one of the oldest structures in the Giardini. The intention is to preserve and highlight this artifact. The new colonnades will start expanding according to this element. The width of the original facade approximately is 10 meters, and a new layer will be a repetition of this logic, wrapping up the entire area with an 8 meter offset. By removing the highlighted elements, the history of the backside facade will be refined, highlighted, and combined with the new colonnades. This drawing illustrates all the elements working together to produce the new civic space. This plan shows the new civic space in the form of participation. Field of objects, sculpture, drawing, books, fruits, self-organized around the new access. The occupation can be anywhere, from the canal to the hall, to the bookstore and the giardini. The interior with two entrances will become an accessible hall to everyone, the second entrance to the Biennale. The space underneath the library generates great social intensity, linking with the new bridge. The canal now is a new transitional threshold to the giardini, from boats to steps to the colonnades and finally the arts, forming layers of micro-interaction between different constituencies broad mediums of art and the Giardini.
This section shows how the design integrates the canal and the historical as one continuous fabric. Finally, this series of rendering shows the proposal in tranquility, without any form of occupation, highlighting the aesthetic of the prototype structure in the context and showcasing its spatial conditions. Starting from the front, a new entrance next to the facade, exposing the entire interior, transparent, contemporary, and sleek. Visitor will be invited to see through the entire building, which provides a complete new reading of Giardini and a sense of civicness. Walking into the main space, the curvature of the canal creates a dynamic atmosphere, giving a distinctive unique art experience once Visitor walked in. The new library entrance, which now serves as a public space that connects people to the canal, the city, and the history of the Venice Biennale inside the library. At evening, the luminance interact with the structure, painting a contemporary Venice. Finally, the back facade. The original archway is highlighted and fully restored with an additional entrance from the canteen. The new structure emerges out of historical constraint and chaos, bringing in harmony, a new reading of Giardini and the canal. They together create a sense of scale, integrity to the space that is distinctive yet contemporary to Venice. This project brings infrastructure, communication platform to the enclosed Giardini in a non-hierarchical, inclusive sense. The project is also a journey on pushing the boundary between aesthetic and form with a mindfulness to history, using the result as a weaponry to dissolve Venice Biennale physical and organizational boundaries, ultimately radicalize how we perceive and participate in art in Venice.